Hi everyone, Pam Gregory, Astrologer. I'd like to talk to you today, in one sense a little more personally, in another sense a little more broadly, um, about endings and beginnings, because we are really in a, an extraordinary period of endings and beginnings historically, in terms of the evolution of humanity right now. So I just want to share some, some details around that. And if you're not super familiar with your your own birth chart, this could be a good time to, to get it out and follow me through. Um, if you don't have a birth chart yet, you can go onto my website, onto the free birth chart section and just uh, download uh, your own birth chart, just put in your own data. And what would be very helpful as well is if you haven't got my two part video series, it's a real beginner's video series that um, explain to you the basic orientation of a chart and the house rulerships. That'd be really useful for you to get because clearly I don't know all of your charts and I can't refer to the positions of all of your, your charts in a general video. But knowing the house rulerships is really, really important in getting the meaning um, in your own birth chart. And, and I'll explain a little more of that as we go through. So why have I called this video Endings and Beginnings? Because I think that's what we are in right now. It's very interesting that if we look at the outer planets, uh, they've all been retrograde for the last few months. They are now all starting to move direct and they're moving direct onto new territory where um, in most cases they haven't been in our lifetimes. So. Just to be more specific about that, Saturn, the last three planets to move direct are Saturn, um, Uranus and Neptune. Saturn moves direct on the 4th of November. Neptune moves direct on the 6th of December and Uranus finally moves direct on the 27th of January. Then they will all be moving direct. And that's gonna create some very different energy for us in 2024, quite a different year, I think, particularly around, if we look at the early half of the year, particularly around February and very strongly in April, we're gonna have some very different energy coming. It's gonna be a much more fast moving year than we've had in the last few. So to, to go through these one by one, Saturn through November will be, they're barely moving at the moment. So through November, Saturn will be just at zero to one degrees of Pisces. So see in your own chart whether you have anything. Keep it really tight between 29 degrees of Aquarius and one degree of Pisces. Really don't want to go very much beyond that, maybe two degrees of Pisces. Um, keep it really tight. I'm just going to talk about the conjunctions in this chart, not the other aspects, because it's going to get too um, too complicated. But Saturn was first at, in recent times, at zero degrees of Pisces in March of this year. So see which house area of your chart Saturn is falling in, which area of life, and see if it is conjunct a planet between, let's say, 29 of Aquarius and two degrees of Pisces. Do you remember what was be coming up in March for you that may be that may well be coming to completion now. This is how we use astrology, looking at the cycles, because if we think of the symbolism of Saturn, it's to do with um, control, frustration sometimes, restrictions, rules, regulations, authority figures, uh, burdens, taking on more responsibility, it's that kind of thing. But with Saturn, we can turn lead into gold if we work very hard, if we work very patiently and uh, conscientiously through a project, we then get the gold, you know, we get the promotion or we get a, a project that we're really um, very pleased with at the end. It's that kind of steady, patient, cautious pro um, uh, process where Saturn works best. However, go back to March in your own life and see if anything was beginning then. And not just in the house area, but if it is conjunct a planet, see which house that planet rules in your chart. Again, I can't tell you that. That's why you need the two part video series, which will explain that. See which house that particular planet rules. And that will give you another area of life where this 
ending this conclusion may well be operating. Hope I'm making sense here. So Saturn is not going to be back in that place for, it has an orbit of 29 and a half years, for another 29 years, Saturn is not going to be at zero degrees of Pisces. That may take you to the end of your life, depending on your, your age. And Saturn is then moving on to new territory. Now, if we take Uranus, Uranus um, is currently at 20, 21 degrees of Taurus. It hasn't been in um, that position since the, well, since the late 1930s, actually. Um, and it won't return to that position for another 84 years, roughly. So most certainly the rest of your life. So it's going to just edge back slightly to 19 degrees of Taurus in January before it moves direct on the 27th of January. So again, this is the last time it will be in that position. So see which house area, again, Uranus is falling in your chart. And if you have a planet between kind of 19, 21, 22 degrees of Taurus, see what that planet is. It could be an angle in your chart, it could be your ascendant, your midheaven. Um, and again, the two-part video series will explain the meanings of those rather than me repeating all of that here. But um, this will be very significant if you have a conjunct a planet or an angle. Now it's very different symbolism as we know to Saturn. If Saturn is about uh, playing by the rules, working hard, keeping your head down, you know, in a very conventional way, um, Uranus is about perhaps breaking the rules. It's a huge, urgent, urgent urge for freedom, authenticity, uh, finding your unique essence, breaking away, breaking up the stale, breaking up the routine, um, really is a big, big desire for newness, variety in your life. Um, and see which house area, as I say, it's falling in your chart, because if we don't follow the Saturnian cosmic winds, let's, sorry, the Uranian cosmic winds, let's say, um, if we behave as if we're in a Saturn transit, let's say, then we tend to get the sudden change, the radical change, the disruption coming from the outside. You know, for instance, if Uranus is, is transiting your sixth house of, of work or your 10th house of career, we may suddenly get fired because we're not following the cosmic wind of that Uranus transit. However, if we um, cooperate, as it were, with that Ur Uranian energy, we may become self-employed or we may develop a much more uh, creative outlet beyond our work that really starts to express who we truly are. So this can be very creative, very exciting, but it's urgent and, and, and it, it can bring in very often the use of new technology, you know, if it's moving through your sixth house, you could be using new technology at work. Um, that's also the house of health. You could be using new healing technologies, for instance. But again, Uranus will not be in that territory of your chart for about another 84 years. It's moving on to, you know, endings, beginnings, moving on to new ground. If we look at Neptune currently, Neptune is um, is is around twenty four to twenty five degrees of of Pisces, and as I say, it is moving direct on the sixth of December. And so, with every planet, we can have a less positive expression and a more positive expression. Neptune, in its less positive expression, can be where we feel overwhelm or confusion or you know, just all too much, we feel weepy or in a fog or lost or some sense of disillusionment or even deceit, things not being clear or another party who doesn't want things to be clear. It's that sort of a feeling. So again, see which house area Neptune falls in in your chart. Neptune will spend about 14 years in a chart approximately. Uranus will spend about seven years um, in a house area. So, but at a positive expression, and it, it's always subtle, Neptune, but it can open us up to um, a finer perception, um, 
greater psychic sensitivity, certainly more creativity. I've known people become artists or or poets during these these transits. It can connect you to source your healing ability, uh, a greater sense of your multidimensionality, that kind of thing. So it can be really, really beautiful healing ability, particularly. So this has a 165 degree year orbit. So again, for sure, it's not going to be back in the same place in your chart in your lifetime. So see the house area, see if it's aspecting a planet. And again, which house in your chart that planet rules. That will give you another insight as to what this is about. Uranus transits last about a, a year on those degree points. With Neptune, it's round about 18 months on those same degree areas. So they're drilling down on specific degree areas for, for quite a long time. With Pluto, Pluto transits, um, you certainly won't be experiencing these um, again in your lifetime on this on these degrees because it has a 248 year orbit. So Pluto, as I've spoken about many times, is currently uh, through November, is at 28 degrees of Capricorn. It recently went direct. And it really has been hovering around about 27 to 29 degrees of, of Capricorn. So if you have, again, planets between about 27, 29 degrees, uh, let's stick to Capricorn, let's stick to the conjunctions right now, of Capricorn, you will have been feeling intensity, um, could have been issues around power, control, manipulation, sort of power play uh, relationships. Um, it could have well have been survival issues, trauma, uh, death and rebirth. It doesn't have to be literal death and rebirth at all. It can be um, death of an episode, death of a relationship. But it's ultimately about transformation and your empowerment, ultimately about transformation and your empowerment. So, again, with all of these planets, it's really when they first enter for the first year or, or few it's the early part of the house where they seem to have the most significance in terms of the house meaning. But Pluto could spend up to 20 years in a house. Depending, it's got a very um, elliptical orbit. So the, 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 the period it spends in each house is gonna vary, whether it's kind of close to the earth or further away. But these transits last about two years in, in total. They drill down on those same degrees for quite a period of time. Now, just to give you a personal example of this, to show you how very accurate and very specific um, the astrology can be. And I hope it'll be helpful. You know, I don't like to talk about personal stuff very much, but just to give you a very clear example of how this can work. I have my birth chart, my natal Saturn at 26 degrees of Libra. Saturn is connected to bones and knees also connected to the father figure so there's a, very often a whole backstory about the father and support mechanisms in childhood and that kind of thing but we're not going to go there in this video so I was very aware that Pluto was coming up to 26 degrees of Capricorn and it got to 26 degrees of Capricorn so this is a, an exact square to my natal Saturn squares are you know hard aspects challenging aspects it arrived there in February 2022. And in the first week of March 2022, as many of you know, because I've spoken about it in other videos, I was out on my bike about 12 miles from home and I tore my meniscus very badly and I was in absolute agony. I don't know how I, I don't know how I got home, actually. Um, and I was in a lot of pain through most of uh, 2022, and despite uh, an arthroscopy operation, um, Pluto was really hovering around that 26 degree of Capricorn until really December, December of 2022. And I thought, well, this is going to be interesting because Pluto starts to move off that exact square to my natal Saturn bones and knees. But I was in a huge amount of pain and I saw a professor of surgery at that point looking at the MRI scan and he said, yeah, the structure of your knee is totally collapsed and the only option is complete uh, a total knee replacement. And he said, you've got no option. 
And when people tell me I've got no option, I tend to think, mm, I better have, um, because it's about stepping into your power. So I investigated other options and hey presto, within a week or two, I had found um, with another surgeon, I could have a, um, a PRP, a platelet rich plasma injection. I'll put the, the link for those below, uh, which is a doddle using your own blood plasma. It takes about 15 minutes, the whole thing, you watch it happen. And that was really quite miraculous for me. Um, within a few days, you know, being unable to walk across a room, before that, I was able to uh, walk pretty much normally. And with huge thanks to the thousands of you that sent me healing at that time, you know, I'm immensely, immensely grateful because that made a massive difference as well. But isn't it interesting? I didn't even think of asking for healing until the end of 2022 when Pluto was moving off that exact square um, at 26 degrees of Capricorn exactly square to my Saturn. So I share that with you, you know, I don't like to talk about personal stuff as I say, but people often say that giving personal examples is helpful. And that was so specific to the, you know, as astrology always is to the symbolism and to the timing and to the degree. So this is how it can work. And obviously the more knowledge we have, the, the, the more usefully um, we can um, benefit from it. But it's ultimately about your empowerment. So all of these planets are moving on to new territory, particularly as we get into 2024, it's a very different energy. They're not going back to where they are now, even um, all of them marching forwards. And we also have some of um, the dwarf planets um, changing signs. Sedna, 11,400 year cycle, recently moved into Gemini. Homer, almost 300 year cycle, just moved into Scorpio recently. Uh, Manwe, almost 300 year cycle at the beginning of the year, of, moved on to zero of Aries, and it's still only at one degree of Aries. So this real sense of endings and beginnings. And indeed, over the next three years, 2024, 25, 26, all of those outer planets that I've talked about, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto are all all of them changing signs. And that is absolutely remarkable mathematically that they are all changing signs over that very, very tight three year period. And you've got to go back, I think a good 300 years or so to find anything like that. And that wasn't taking into account the dwarf planets that were changing signs as well. So we are moving into, as I say, different territory, different energy, a very different uh, world for sure. So that's what also gives this sense of endings and beginnings. And so, and coming back to now, as I've spoken about many, many times all through this year, we have Pluto in its T-square to the nodal axis. And that's been like a, a vice, like a real pressure cooker of vice on, okay, so what are your choices? You know, which end of the nodal axis? Is it fear or love? Is it uh, victim or co-creator? Because we've had to make our, our choice as we step onto these new timelines going forward. And remember, nobody forces you onto any timeline. They are self-selecting depending on your frequency. And so this has been a, a massive year and continues to be really right till December of Choice Point. But I, I think we have really uh, made our choices. Um, events have, have kind of forced us into that but this is and really think about this year think over the last three and a half years really how much has your have you changed has your social life changed have, you know the, the media that you watch or don't watch at all um do you have a, a greater sense of psychic sensitivity of awareness of connecting to nature of expanded consciousness of of healing ability, that kind of thing. Sometimes these shifts are subtle, but can you really identify how you are evolving really remarkably rapidly over the last few years? And that 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 evolution is going to be speeded up even more as we as we move forwards. And so I think we have to become much more conscious. You know, we've lived all of our lives, firstly, with reference to external um, authorities, 
external media. That's just how the world has been. It's how our life has been. And we've done it fairly unthinkingly until the last three and a half years. I don't think there was any real need to very much question. We were sort of humming along in a reasonable comfort zone, I think. But the last three and a half years of a force has forced they have forced some realizations for us to enable us to be, become much more aware and much more conscious. And what I'd really suggest we do as we move forward, you know, I think astrology has had such a fated history that people still think, what are the planets doing to me? You know, they're fated. Well, they're not. They're modeling clay. They're modeling clay. And yes, they have specific colors and patterns and, and geometries, but we decide, we decide how we're going to model the clay. Birth charts, any moment in time, gives you a pattern, doesn't give you a frequency. We decide how we're going to play the music. And I would really, really encourage us to step into our power, or, you know, myself included. And that doesn't mean being aggressive or assertive or violent or shouty. It actually means turning inwards much more. It actually means, in many ways, being quiet and really tuning into your um, your radio dial so that every morning you tune your radio dial to, okay, what emotion am I, I'm, uh, you know, is the emotion I'm going to dominate my day with? Is it joy? Is it love? Is it peace? Is it gratitude? And choose to live from the inside out. Really choose that because the more we can live from the inside out, you know, we're never going to see peace in the world unless we feel peace in ourselves. We're never going to see love in the world until we feel love in ourselves. It just can't happen because we create this kind of hologram of individual realities and all of these holograms kind of match up to form a collective reality. There's a Chinese proverb uh, pro proverb as well about your, your thoughts today are creating your tomorrows. And I absolutely, absolutely would endorse that. Now, are we in a world of chaos, turbulence, horror? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that recent events has done, I think positively, is open our hearts. Open our hearts to have more compassion and really live from the heart. You know, really live with, with much more love than we might have done before. We just didn't really think about it. But I think so often there are efforts to make us look over here and next month make us look over there and now make us look over here because that's a really big thing. And so it is so easy, particularly when events are emotional and we do have big loving hearts, to get caught up in those events externally and again whenever our focus is is more external we're giving away our power our energy becomes scattered and we are not living in our power and sovereignty we're kind of all over the place and we're easily distracted by the next big thing and the next big thing and the next big thing and that's when it starts to feel completely overwhelming and what those events do as well is to make it very easy to fall into polarized camps of right, wrong, good, bad, left, right, black, white, whatever. I'm right, you're wrong. You know, very easy to fall into polarity, division, and separation. And that isn't a great place for humanity to be because actually the vast, vast majority, I'd say probably 99% of the world's population want the same things. We want peace. We want safety and security, a roof over our heads. We want food for ourselves and our families. We want that feeling of, of loving friends and family around us. We, we all want that. Depend, it doesn't matter what, what religion, what nationality, it doesn't matter. That's what we want. We are one humanity. And yet, you know, there's a very tiny number of people in the world who, who, who don't want that. And we must remember that we are one humanity. 
in terms of physics, we our conversations with Professor Robert Temple. There is one living consciousness in the universe, one living and loving, I want to say, consciousness, this divine intelligence that permeates everything. You know, so we must come back to this sense of being of being one humanity. And it's interesting that you know, in the research I've done, and Lynn McTaggart is, talks a great deal about, about this, that our best transformational state is altruism. Our best transformational state is, is altruism. When we have this feeling of coming together and helping others. And in Lynn McTaggart's last book, The Power of Eight, she was doing a lot of work in, with people in groups of eight to say, send healing to somebody in the group. And there could have been a person, let's call her Anne, who actually had quite a serious illness, but the focus of the group this time around was Susan. So everybody was sending healing to Susan. But in sending healing to Susan, there was a kind of boomerang effect and Anne actually got healed, even though she wasn't the focus of the healing. There's a boomerang effect because what happens when we are in group energy on the same frequency, that energy isn't additive, it's multiplied. It's multiplied. Not only that, but again, uh, Lynn McTaggart says that the power of our intention also multiplies depending on how many people are thinking the same thing at the same time. That's a quote from Lynn McTaggart. And so that simple idea I suggested for us to come together on a, on a Sunday evening, 7, 7 p.m. UK time, isn't original. Lots of people are doing that all over the world, but simply that those of you who watch my videos might be on a, a similar frequency. And so we can come together holding hands, if you, if you like, and, and imagine that. Imagine that we are all holding hands across the world as little beacons of light, and we're forming this grid of light. And every time we come together, even just for 15 minutes, 15 minutes in love, joy, peace, compassion, gratitude, that energy is building and building and building. And I know it is because people are writing to me about their experiences. That's all it takes is 15 minutes. There are no Zoom links, no notifications, no reminders. You just join energetically. You just step into that imagining those feelings of, I'm setting an intention for a more loving, compassionate, peaceful and abundant world. And off you go with your vision, your dream, your intention for those 15 minutes. And we're doing it. We are doing it because, yes, absolutely, we are going to see more chaos and more turbulence. I guarantee it. Because that's what the astrology is showing me. You know, astrologers would be surprised if we weren't seeing that. So that's actually quite reassuring. So despite the, you know, the awful things, the endings, the collapse of the old systems, and yes, it's going to get louder, for sure, because the old systems, the old order, you know, nothing ever wants to die, does it? But it isn't that we have to wait for that and be standing in the building site in the demolition site covered in dust and rubble and have nothing because the new is already being born. The new is already, and you know, coming together in these groups, that the new is already being born, that we are, we are seeding new earth in every moment. And as we move forwards as well, as I say, into very different energy, you know, Pluto is going to be moving into Aquarius um, in January, fully in November next year for 20 years. That is really going to bring up as one of many things, AI. Sedna just moving into Gemini, big time about AI. Sedna is going to be trying to Pluto to facilitate AI. There can be many other things happening, but one of the things that means an AI can be immensely beneficial for our world, invent lots of new healing technologies that can be some wonderful sides. But it also means that it's going to be harder and harder for us to tell what's true and what's not if we're looking through a screen. What's true and what's not? AI through every screen, your phone, your computer, your iPad, whatever, any kind of media outlet, it's going to be very hard to tell what's true and what's not. And therefore, one of the best sides of Aquarius is coming together in groups, physical, real 
groups, real person to real person, because you can then see what's laughing, hugging, etc. Now, these groups are all over the world in their various forms. And Aquarius energy is, is community, it's collaboration, coming together and grassroots up, starting to shift the um, socio-political structure to something much more horizontal and fair rather than vertical, top-down and elitist. And I've, I've, I've talked about this to death over the last sort of two, three years. But that really, you know, if you look at historical cycles, and again, I've gone into that in a lot of detail, that's always what happens. But And it is absolutely a shift of power to the people, but power is not given to the people. We have to take the power, and we take the power by not being shouty and loud. We take the power by being absolutely solid in our sovereignty and beaming out love, joy, peace, compassion, gratitude, and abundance to the world. That's how we get out of the hamster wheel. Misery, war, disease, death, that's how we get out of the hamster wheel of thousands and thousands of years. And this is such a unique evolutionary opportunity. We really have a blank canvas. Yes, we have the, um, you know, the astrology, and God bless the astrology, because it gives us so many clues in the symbolism of the planets, the signs that they're moving into, uh, the uh, geometry that they form with each other. They give us so much information. They can act as a very wise guide as to where we're headed, but it, they don't determine it. They determine the pattern and the geometry. They do not determine our frequency in our consciousness. I've said that right all the way through my work. We as humanity determine that. So yes, we have a blank canvas in a way. And when <clears throat> reality is very churned up, when there's a breakdown happening in those lower vibrational structures, although it is chaotic, and destabilizing, it actually makes it easier to create something new because the energy is freed up. The energy is, free, you know, the modeling clay is softer, if you like, to create our new earth, but it's down to us. And that's why it's so important to come together as one humanity and to constantly think I'm living from the heart. And if you don't know how to do that, even the simple act of imagining that you're breathing in and out of the heart, you know, shut your eyes several times a day, imagine that you're breathing in and out of the heart. That just makes you aware of your heart, brings you back to love, brings you back to gratitude. Because if we do that, we are also broadcasting more coherent energy. And our heart's toroidal field is enormous. It's much bigger than our brain's toroidal field. We know the heart sends more information to the brain than the brain does to the heart. Look at the heart math, it institute information. I've talked about that many times too. But with greater coherence becomes a more rapid formulation of new earth. A coherent reality, a coherent re uh, new earth manifests much more quickly that when, than when we are in split disharmony, I'm right, you're wrong. So we must be very aware, even in our groups coming together, because you know this is clearly happening all over the world as well, even in our very well-meaning groups, we must be aware of, I'm right, you're wrong, and finger pointing, because that isn't gonna help us get anywhere at all. You know, just stay at zero point. You may not agree with everybody in the group, just, just keep your, I, what I tend to do personally is just keep my own counsel. Just, you may be able to, to voice those, those, those thoughts very calmly, but try and avoid the, the I'm right, you're wrong, the finger pointing, the, um, the incoherent energy, because that isn't going to help us get to where we need to be. And this is such an exciting evolutionary opportunity. Um, so I hope that's helped you. I'm in the process of thinking about big themes for 2024. There are going to be a lot of them. 
there's so much to say about that. And over the next couple of months, I'm really kind of ruminating and and thinking about what those themes are and how we can use them to our to our best. So, um, but think of the bigger picture. Think we are one humanity. Think that you are a a, a real a warrior of light and a warrior of love in what we're doing literally in every moment every moment even if you're alone at home you are creating new earth with every moment of the energy that you're broadcasting hope it's helped <laughs> god bless and i'll be back very soon with another update bye for now